Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lumastic Live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for spending your Friday morning with us as we um, check in with you all and like what it's like to to grow this company. And we talk about a topic today. Um, we're talking about uh, the intersection of art and engineering, based on the um, kind of conversation at the beginnings of our wild stream last week, where we went on a big tangent about surfing and skateboarding. <laughs> And so we thought we'd just delve in more, delve in more. But before we get into that, Joshua, this has been a big week for you. How are, how are you? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. I was telling Drew before this, uh, I like submitted my STS and technical thesis for school, which were two big papers, and finished that yesterday and presented on it. And it was just feeling really good. Um, probably like have bags under my eyes. As Drew pointed out before this, like, look really tired. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it feels so weird that like it's done. Like every time something finishes that's like big that you've been working towards. Yeah. It definitely feels so weird. It feels, yeah, it's so weird. When um, I did like theater in high school, um, that's how I would feel after like shows, right? Because it's like this big buildup of like three months. You're like, like in the slog, constantly rehearsing all these things. Oh, you have a very unfortunate frozen face right now, Joshua. No. But... <laughs> Really? No. <laughs> no that, that's all right. You'll come back. You'll come back. But, but um, um, yeah. And then, then after the show is over, it's like this. Um, we'd call it like post-show depression, is because you like don't know what to do with your like time anymore. It's like so, so bizarre. Um, yeah. All right, Joshua. I'm gonna try to get you to 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 come back here. All right. Um, I'm gonna will you back into existence. Um, maybe if I minimize you and bring you back. Or, or, or if I turn your camera off and turn it back on? Oh. Oh, now I have to ask to turn your camera on. Nope. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so unfortunate. Oh, there I we go. Hope. There we go. The gods of the universe the decided to bring so, you back. The, I, I saw the pause screen because, like, on this my side, and I was like, this needs to this needs to stop very soon. Very soon. <laughs> This cannot <laughs> this cannot go on for much longer. <laughs> no worries. Then it's a yeah. true podcast. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just talk it. Um but Joshua, that's really, really exciting. Uh, everybody everybody in the chat, how many people we got? Two, one, <laughs> one person. <laughs> one solid person. Two, three, three people. Everybody pour one out for Joshua. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joshua yeah. finishes his thesis yeah. today. Okay. Yeah. Well, Joshua, that's super exciting. Um, I'm like really happy for you. It's a, a, like being done with school was like the greatest feeling I think I've ever had. Um, yeah. But sadly, you're you're not done. But yeah, <laughs> I got a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, you'll get there. It's all right. Um, doing big things. But that yeah, that's really cool. I'm 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 excited. I'm I'm happy for you. Like now, you get to revel in the next what month of your life before you jump into a master's program. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to be doing some like part time work for Arena Labs. They just recently were like, we have a couple projects for you. Uh, we want to bring you on for a little bit. And so it's kind of my first paid uh, kind of like first paid big deal of projects. So I'm nice. like really excited for that. I was like so stoked. Um, so I'm going to be doing that for like the next three weeks and then like as part time work. So I'm so excited for that. Oh, that's and, awesome, man. Uh, yeah. Super how's, cool. How's your week been? I've been seeing on the Instagram takeovers. I saw Sarah's on Wednesday. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I saw uh, a your sneak peek of the grand <laughs> office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a good week. I feel like. Um, so we have exciting things to share. Oh no, Joshua, you're frozen again. Um, try, try maybe I'm gonna try switching Wi-Fi. Okay, that sounds good. I'll 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 keep the peace. I'll keep everybody entertained right. while you're gone. <laughs> sounds good. Um, but we've had we've had an exciting week. Yeah, Sarah did an amazing Instagram takeover, which I thought was super fun. Um, she's right in the background here, uh, running our chat. So everybody, shout out in the chat, to Sarah. <laughs> um, yeah, we've also like. Um, like exciting things we talked uh, last week, our marketing team about setting some goals for 
follower count and engagement and um really exciting that like we've had almost 200 percent growth on our instagram following um which means we went from 20 to 60 people but shout out to those 60 people <laughs> that that um decided to come and follow us we're really excited to have you on this journey um and to just like tell our story a little bit more so that's that was exciting we've also in terms of development timeline this is like today is like the the day we're trying to um, wrap up our development sprint so that we can push to our development server on Sunday. Um, so that's like super cool. And then we'll do like uh, testing for like a week. Joshua, I'm going to let you know how you can get on the dev site. So, so, so <laughs> that you can you could take a sneak peek around. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And then hopefully next week we'll or I guess next Sunday um, we'll push things to production and then like uh kind of go gangbusters and think think about what's next we already have like some plans for what's next stuff that we scrapped from this sprint to put it on the next one um just because it w became more complicated in scope than we thought um one of them is the text editor i've been working on <laughs> um That's yeah cool. it's been, it been like a, a solid week um also the blog post i put out on surfing was super fun um i really just like uh enjoyed talking about how um this thing that i debate with a lot with a lot um uh or with people a lot is the idea that like everything is art um uh i found it fun to like put that in a funny kind of blog post about something that people really would not see as art which is surfing and i got to put a lot of shakas and chabras in there which was fun <laughs> That's awesome. I just want to say it's crazy how the design sprint is almost over. Like I, it's felt I like just the other day or just the other Lumastic Live, you were like, we're starting a design sprint. It's going to be great. And now it's, we're finishing the design sprint. We're launching. Wow. It's, it's wild. And um, yeah, it's one of those things that's like, I'm trying to like remind myself and be cognizant of the fact that like, we have lived with this for like six weeks, right? And so we are past the point where we see it as new. Uh, and so we're like focusing on like, or at least me, I'm like constantly focusing on the what's next. Um, but I'm trying to take some time this weekend as we push to development and as we go and test through to like revel in the fact that like, this is so cool. Um, and to kind of just like pay attention and be present to the fact that like, we have have got something that I think is really fun is and it is gonna help even me in my like daily work life. So um yeah, I'm just trying to like be present and like be excited for like the next things coming, um, which is gonna be like the entire board revamp. Um this has really been like a UI and kind of structural um like repackaging. Um but yeah, so it's cool stuff. It's awesome. It's so exciting. I mean, I can't wait for the um, developer they're the dev site to start using yeah. it and your developer preview your de <laughs> i like it i like it <laughs> cool well joshua we have a topic today that i think is super exciting it ties into like the blog post and stuff like art and engineering i think two things that um usually are seen as um i don't know if any more but definitely like when I was growing up, were seen as like opposing forces. Um, and now more and more people are seeing the fact that like they are literally the same. same. Um, and I think if you had asked any artist or engineer throughout the the past like 200 years, they'd say this, they'd say that. It's just I don't know why our cultural society has decided to make them different, but we're here to have like a exciting fun conversation about um, our experiences in kind of like both fields and also like how we see them um, intersect in the world around us. So kick us off, Joshua. What, what, yeah. are, you, what, what are you thinking? I guess I guess I want to sit like kind of go back to that point where you said like they were seen as separate things when you were kind of growing up more so. Mm -hmm. So maybe start. I, I'm curious to start with like how you kind of navigated both and like in the, the beginning, early, young Drew days, very <laughs> young Drew days when you started getting like kind of interested in both. Um, because I yeah. think that that was very true. Um, what like what your experience was like 
uh, from from the get go, and like also a little bit more of your thoughts on like why you think culturally it was separated. Because I think it is true, but I think it's like coming back now. Um, and there's so many things about like like design. Like there's way more like right. the programs I was applying to. There's more of them coming out every single year about like design impact engineering. Design right. engin- like it's literally the intersection of the two. It's getting more and more popular. But I do think there was like they were seen as different things and were like kind of the respect for them was very different. Um, yeah. Which, yeah. So to kick, like, kickstart us off with like the beginning, I guess, <laughs> journey navigating all those things. You in, know the I mean? beginning. in the beginning. <laughs> in the, in the, in the beginning. beginning. Um, for, for me, it was always like, um, I was good at math and science uh, in school. And I also really liked to do music. And you know how they like structure school programs where you can only take like a certain amount of electives and blah, 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 blah. Um, it was always like uh, having to kind of be in two camps and also like be in, I would also say like two social groups because like a lot of people who went into the artistic music side of things, um, specifically like choir and singing, which I feel like is always the um, like either low or mid tier of like the music departments, um, right? Like band and orchestra are always seen as like a very traditional, like you're playing, like it's, it's seen as, um, more regal. Right. Yeah. And then, and, um, choir drama, um, dance, if you have that at your school is always seen as like a lower tier art. Um, and yeah, so I found like, as I was growing up, um, just that I really liked to do, both things. And I didn't feel like I was two separate people in those, um, like departments, like literally moving to different classrooms. And so I just always tried to also see why, um, they were similar. Like I remember explaining to my, um, high school choir teacher, um, a bunch of calculus concepts as they pertained to music. It is like one of the big inspirations that um, made the Why Do Instruments Sound Different video um, was like that thing that I would <laughs> like talk about um, in terms of frequency and all these things. Because uh, when she grew up, right, it was like, I am not a math person, right? I am not good yeah. at physics. In fact, um, she probably because she was both artistic and a woman um, was told that like, that's not for you. Right. And so I vehemently was against like, (laughs) like that idea, because I think my self identity was wrapped up in the fact that like, I, I am and can do both. Right. Yeah. Um, And so I wanted her to see too, that like, these are not different. Um, Like music is math. Um, And so like the fact that you're exceptionally talented at like, um, like producing things that have beautiful relationships, right? It means like you are inherently good at math. I used to tell like kids I tutor um, or uh, tutored uh, in college um, at like the uh, Buford Middle School in Charlottesville um, that like, cause they are like really struggling with math and all these things. And I would explain that like your, your brain automatically does math. Like your brain being able to t- to catch a ball or like for them, it was soccer, um, like to kick, kick a soccer ball yeah. and like aim it and all that stuff. Your brain is doing so much fucking math that like um, for you to say you're not a math person is really just saying like, I don't understand the language of how to interpret what I already know and communicate that externally. Right. And so all we're learning is like how to. Um, understand the things that we inherently know and uh, externalize them and communicate them on paper through problems. Um, Yeah, so to recap this first part of the conversation, um, for me, it was always like the intersection of music, math, and science, um, and uh, also just liking to make stuff. Like, right, um, starting in middle school, I liked to make videos i was always like really really into lego sets in elementary school right yeah um which is the combination right of all these like let's design and build something right which is seen legos are seen as like an engineering tool um or something to teach kind of engineering concepts but um 
really they are also teaching art right like i want this to look this certain way and i only have these certain blocks right it's like making pixel art but in yeah. a physical world right <laughs> yeah yeah uh and yeah so it, it's again just like comes down to this concept that like they are in interoperable and basically all the same because to, to recap from the blog post it's like art is literally like the production of creative thought right yeah um it's something that's meant to have emotional or um, like cultural impact. I, I made the funny joke in my blog post that like, like this blog post is art. It might be bad, shitty art, <laughs> but, art. <laughs> but like, but it is yeah. it's something that I have produced from my brain. So Joshua, then I pivot the, the question back to you. It's like, um, what has your experience been like as somebody who has gone down now this like engineering path, but I know is like super into like, well, I don't want to spoil anything for you. It's your story. You tell it. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah. So I think it was very similar. So I was very interested since I was pretty young. I think I was pretty, pretty interested in making stuff. Um, that's what always kind of like intrigued me about the like engineering because like I would and even just like the arts, like it, they make stuff. And that yeah. that's like it's like it comes down to just like that simple phrase for me. Like I was really into band at the time um, with the saxophone. I was always into like experimenting with things and like going on YouTube. The sexiest instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then I had a really bad band teacher and was like, screw this. <laughs> um, but no, yeah. And so like it, that was always like a, a ton of fun um, to play. And I, I, but I did see them as separate things. Like because right. it, I do think culturally it's like music, like, you know, whatever. They, you won't make as much job security, all those things. So, like, a lot, I feel like that's why a lot of the arts, like, professions get kind of like boxed into something else. And I was literally talking with a friend the other day whose side, um, who was actually just left at 5 a.m. this morning, was doing <laughs> photography at UVA. Um, and I was helping so him get cool. clients, and he picked up photography and he's going to Georgetown Medical School. And so, we were talking about he loves photography and he really has the eye for it. And he's always thinking about things from like a photography perspective. Like even if he doesn't have his camera, he'd be like, oh, this is gonna be such a cool photo. Oh, like I'm really curious what this would look like. And so, and we were doing like things with different grad caps. Like we had this idea to have like a floating grad cap as like um, this picture. And we, we created it this week. Like I had an idea, I was like, here, I'm gonna hold it. Like we could go into Photoshop. And I mean, he did like a lot of it with like the camera angles and stuff like that. But like, he's, so he's that creative, right? And so we were talking about it. He was like, yeah, honestly, a low key dream of mine would be National Geographic, like photography, mm -hmm. right? And, and he's like, but that job security is so hard. And then I, I kind of said to him, I was like, medical school is ridiculously <laughs> hard. We got into Georgetown Medical School, like I, it's a, so funny that somebody somebody in their life is like, uh, yeah, you know, photography is too hard to get into. I think I'll go to medical school. <laughs> well, he, he, to, to be fair, it's not like one or the other. He loves medicine. Like he loves he's one of the like he loves both. But I just like in the moment, like because I'm guilty of this, too. Like sometimes I'd be, I'd be like, I love music, like love consuming lots and lots of music. I mean, right. he's teased me for it. Like we have this kind of teasing relationship. Like um, he, he low key got me to buy like a DJ board because he was like, man, the amount of like, he calls me like the modern day Shazam for like hip hop. Cause like, I literally will be just like saying lyrics when I'm hanging with them. And he's like, he's like, Josh, can you please just shut up? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, he, he always goes like, how do I turn this thing off? And he's like, oh, are you rebooting your system? But like all these things, like all these jokes, right? It's very like separate. But the, the thing is, it's like, if it is very it's a cultural thing because like you said like george, george he got into georgetown which is the heart it was the hardest school to get into this year they had wow. like the most applicants a huge accomplishment and si similar thing for like you could say it for like cs paths even like someone going through that path and then becoming a full stack developer like still incredibly hard but like we have this like stigma that's like arts is like you know, like it's, it's so hard. It's like you to make it, it's so hard. It's like mm -hmm. a lot of people might do it, but um, it's like just so incredibly hard and competitive. But like, I, I kind of push back on that and like say like, 
a lot of other professions are very cut, like have that competition depending where you're trying to go, especially medical school, which is like so many people get weeded out. There's like 53,000 applications yearly. People spend like gap years upon gap years trying to get into that cycle. Then they have to go through residency yeah. fellowship. But anyways, this is kind of a tangent, but I, I would say like that's kind of culturally the mindset I had early on and then went into high school, like continuing to like make stuff, uh, just like found all that stuff like really cool, like still found that arts really side of things really cool. Um, I think then when I got into college and chose BME and I was taking all the general like classes, like gen chem, gen physics, like they were cool. But like at that point I was very much so like, I really thought I was gonna be making stuff like, and realized that's like slowly over the time in college, like that it's very much so the intersection between arts and engineering um, or like they're, they're just like very similar. This is the stuff that like, I love to do, which is the like 3D printing or like making right. stuff on my own or like finding um, lovely startups to work with and like <laughs> do creative work like that. That's the stuff that's like um, that, like the, there was such a, I feel like cultural stigma, like growing up. And then I kind of like found the group, but then there's still like occasionally people will be like, if you're doing like arts or like a, you know, like, it's just like, it's, it's seen different still like Adobe Illustrator versus knowing python or like right. you know it's but there's they they overlap so much like so much nowadays and i think that people are realizing that like to make these great products in engineering and like what we were talking about like skateboard surfing like these people are incredibly like have artistic minds like incredible yeah, exactly yeah and so. and something that i found interesting just like um uh just based on what you're you're talking about is even now as we're having this conversation we started to like dip back into this mindset of like um like arts versus engineering right like yeah. talking about like um traditional like things that are seen as artistic in, in our society versus like the things that we found interesting and like found paths to um to hear right like uh whether it's like uh um cs 3d printing all these things but like even like let's take 3d printing as an example like people think of that as a very tech heavy engineering heavy um uh medium um but like if you think about it 3d printing is modern day sculpting like like that yeah, is that. literally it. and if we've replaced those words right like sculpting is seen as very arti artistic, right? Like, yeah. um, uh, but yeah, literally if we replace the words and I, I think it has a lot to do, like the reason people find this like dichotomy and like it, cause it's still really prevalent, right? Like we're, we're telling children that they need to go into like STEM fields. We've now changed that to steam fields, right? Like incorporating arts, um, Again, I feel like saying that stuff is like sh is trying to like separate them. Um, but yeah, I think it's really because of the the mediums seem more complicated now, right? Like um, before, if you wanted to be like an artist, right, you could get like paint, tr like, tr like even a pencil, right? It was like very easy, accessible, all these things. And because the tools were really accessible, people that were really good with the tools were seen as like amazing artists. Yeah. Right. Now the tools are kind of complicated, right? Like, like getting into 3D printing, if we're going to keep with this example, is like difficult. Like there's a lot to learn it not only from the actual machine, but like the software components that go into like you actually like going into a 3D modeling software and like designing something or sculpting something in, in something like Blender um, and then slicing it in a slicing software and then taking that G code to your, to your 3D printer to make it real, right? Way more complicated than a pencil. And I think because it's way more complicated than a pencil, people see that now as like engineering. Yeah. I right? completely it's, agree it's less just like inherent human creativity and more like oh well you know that stuff or you like have a 3d printer right and so um to call that art i think to traditional artists is like a slight when it's not a slight right like like um those like traditional traditional mediums never owned art like owned the term right um it's just that i think we're getting 
as we kind of create this divide and separation between um like i'd I'd say like technologists or engineers um and like the everyday person, which I hope that this is gonna like this is one of the problems that we need to solve in the world is like technical educa education um but yeah, I hope that that gap can like shrink and we can even make tools more accessible and like all these things so that it becomes like a pencil right um but yeah, it's just like really interesting to me um, that idea that even as we've been having this conversation, we've been like seeing art as like traditional arts. Yeah. But in reality, like um, I have my like we, we grabbed examples here before we we got on. Oh, my gosh, we have seven people. We have oh, seven almost. people concurrently watching. Holy shit. <laughs> Everyone shout Ali Kazare. Thank you so much for fucking being here. Sarah, you have to tell me when people come in here. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ali Kazare, I haven't seen you in so long. This is so sweet. Thank you for being here. Um, sick, but uh, little examples. Like, this is m the electric skateboard that I built in, <laughs> in college. This is both This is both proof that I am uh, a skater boy, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also a weird tech nerd. Um, yeah, so this is like a tackle box full of electronics. Um, but literally like RC parts. I got a friend to help uh, who knew how to weld at UVA help me weld on this motor mount. It's so um, cool. Yeah, and then it was like it. It's obviously a part now. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was like belt driven. Um, and it was because I was like, hey, I really like to skate. Right, that's like a form of um fun like recreation right that i like to do um and so it'd be cool if i had a motor on it but at that point at that time the only electric skateboard that was like good enough to buy was the boosted board and it costs two thousand dollars and i was like it yeah don't like don't it. have that cash yeah um so let me like build my own thing to help me like have more fun riding around school um i'll give you one more example um so i was uh, hired to do the live stream for um, UVA's uh, Lighting of the Lawn, which is, if you don't know, is like a um, big kind of like concert celebration thing that happens around the holiday season, like the end of um, the like fall semester um, before everybody goes on winter break. And it's like this like big raucous party thing. And so my first year I was like, I started a video company. And so let me like get a job running the live stream. This is the first time they ever streamed Lighting of the Lawn live. And I was like there at in 10 degree weather, like with my cameras trying to keep them from not freezing, yeah. like shooting the thing. And um, before when we were like doing the map of... Um, basically like the reason I got the job um is because I like walked around with a camera all the time and like was recording videos all the time and so one of my friends who was on the um committee said like oh you're really into video stuff do you have a drone we're really looking for somebody to like um do drone flying around um UVA and I just said yes and I didn't have a drone <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted this job. And yeah. so um, over the course of the next month, I built my own drone. Oh, my God. Um, with like a, a gimbal that I put my GoPro on and all these things to try and like, right, get these aerial shots that we wanted for the video. Um, to recap this story, my drone fell out of the sky and crashed, but I got the shots. Of <laughs> that, that, that I Where did, did it crash? Uh, it crashed like in one of the lawn um, Garden. uh, gardens. That's um, good place it to thankfully crash. didn't hit anybody, but yeah. it was like it was wild. I like flew over a chimney, so it's like super cold, right? And so all of the um, like uh, basically things that keep this thing balanced um, were like already kind of shocked to system. And then I flew over a chimney, and the smoke got into the ports that try to keep oh. it like level and all these things and so then it just like got decimated and fell out of the sky um and it was a big yike at the moment but uh, it's a great story now <laughs> nice. it really is yeah. it's one of those that you have to look back on but you got the thoughts yes exactly yeah, exactly yeah. and this and this was really to show that like um the thing i was making the thing i needed to get the shots for right it, that thing can be seen as art right we see movies as art um but to get that right i needed to build tools i needed to make stuff i needed to like solder components and delve into like rc electronics and speed controllers and all these things to like 
make that happen, to make that art happen. And I feel like that is really this like shows this relationship that it's all just about creative expression, right? We have problems we need to solve. And we use the tools, the mediums at our disposal to solve those problems, whether that's the problem of like, I have a story I need to tell and the medium I like is painting, right? Or, yeah. or it's, um, hey, I have an idea for like a product that could help, um, I don't know, like, uh doctors sew child hearts together better right <laughs> like yeah. um after surgery like though it's all the same and then the it's the same process that we go through to to create stuff that solves those problems to like um have cultural and emotional impact in the lives of others which means therefore everything is art. art math proof <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I mean, it really is. I think this is also kind of a, a story I realized, like just in my engineering curriculum that solidified it even more. So I, I when I got into college, um, my friend back home, Matthew, um, shout out Matthew, he's really into like making beats. And so he got into the software Ableton because we both really like and are inspired by this one producer, Kenny Beats. And he posts a lot of videos of him working in Ableton. So naturally, like, just kind of fell in love with Ableton because that's what we grew to know. But then he got me the software to like mess around and dabble with because like I, I really also like um, beats and, and and that type of music. And so like just working in it, I remember I was being I was in a systems and signals class at UVA um, for BME. So and cool. we're talking about like system, like different signals and like filters and low pass. And I'm like, why is this like stuff like so familiar? Like I'm I'm using this stuff. I, I was like in class, literally sitting there, like I'm using this stuff, stuff, stuff somewhere else. And then I literally like had this like moment, like, like, oh shit, like this is literally like what they use for like beats when they like need to like, there's so many like audio effects That's and like so breaking awesome. it down. And so, but we were like using it obviously for like whatever it's like ECG signals or all, all right, these right, like right. biomedical engineering um, applications. But like it, it, it does come like again, to your point that like en engineering is art, like these, these tools are, they, they're seen as just like, honestly, I think sometimes you just like throw a number next to something and it's seen as engineering. Like that might be an <laughs> overestimation, but like when you open up Ableton, right, then it turns to like, that turns into sound engineering, but like musicians aren't considered right. like, you know, sound, like necessarily sound engineers are separate right. things, but like, they're very, like, they go very hand in hand. They're um, intertwined. They have the and like you said, like they, they'll have the ear for it and be like, like you, I'll see so many like musicians when they're recording the process, they'll turn to the sound engineer and be like this. And it's like what you said with like doing math in your head with like kicking a ball. It's like they're they're intertwined. It's literally the exact same case scenario. It's just exactly. one person knows how to communicate it. Well, no, they both know how to communicate it. But one person knows the like um, other side of it. Yeah, medium. It's medium, right? Like yeah. the the person who's really good at soccer can kick the ball and aim it directly where they want. Like their medium for the interpretation of like the the way that we um, uh, talk about and interact with the world, right? Like through concepts of physics and math, right? They're really good at expressing that understanding, right? In kicking the soccer ball, right? Yeah. But if you, they're maybe not necessarily um, as gifted uh, in writing that out in calculus. Right. And in, in proving yeah. how how they could um, curve the ball and aim given the wind condition and all these things. Right. Because um, because that's it. Right. It's creative. It's all creative expression that has to go through medium. Right. It's just that we see art um, as very specific mediums. Um, but again, I feel like as things get more like, I, I don't know if it's an accessibility thing. That's like something I came up with right now. I, I don't know why we see some things as maybe it's like emotion right it's rather than oh chelsea said something depends on the definition of art i think that uh there is creativity and everything yeah, yeah yeah but chelsea art is the production of creative thought like it is the thing that is produced from that creative expression um i, I think that the reason people think sometimes of things as art versus not art is like it's emotional value rather than it's like um, cultural significance or like all these things. There's a lot of interpretation we make um, about then what is significant enough to become art. Um, but if, we, if we're if we trying to think more logically and less subjectively, right, then like the art being the, the um, thing exported from some sort of creative expression, that makes everything art, 
that makes like conversations you have art right all this stuff so it's about whether you want to go from a a a cultural definition right versus a um uh i don't i don't logical is the wrong word but objective definition um because like so in um uh, an Eastern country, right? They might have a completely different interpretation of what they would classify as art than in the West, right? Yeah. Um, and that's why there's subjectivity. Um, and I'm just like anti-subjectivity. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, no, I, it's, I think it's, yeah, I, I, I kind of also want to kind of go back to the CAD point like with Cad. also joshua we have eight concurrent viewers oh thank you. also thank you to Al ali casare if you're listening to this conversation still and you have anything to add about like how you would um interpret this like concept intersection of art and engineering let us know in the chat <laughs> yeah please please it's need more chat engagement exactly yeah I, I i think the cad thing is such a good point i was actually talking to people like people think again cad is such an engineering thing but like at this point it's such a creative it's the medium it's just the creative like expression exactly. like i literally when i was making the or designing the tennis racket like it literally it felt like sculpting honestly like i just yeah exactly. I had to, like animators like yeah. think about like literally animators at pixar we would say that the movie that they produce is art right but the but job they do exactly when they're sitting at their desk rigging things writing literally like scripts um that uh, attach and unattach objects and scenes and all these things we're like oh that's engineering right yeah but but then there is like a dichotomy that same person right made the thing and had to build the thing to make the thing which i would say transitively like means that the act of rigging the character although we'd see that as um like engineering is art um ali has a question um uh how do you respond when someone uh, someone says i am not artistic oh ali this is, this a, is such a, a good question this is a fan i'm very guilty question. of this yes uh, i i don't know um i i don't say that i'm ever not artistic but i am guilty of like yelling at people when they say that, that they're not artistic <laughs> because literally ali like as we have just this would happen a lot when i tutor i was like a horrible tutor i didn't help anyone with math um <laughs> <laughs> on big diatribe conversations um, you're giving the pep talk you're giving yeah the, yeah exactly yeah. exactly um i'm telling them they can i'm like the coach that like doesn't know how to play soccer but like really encourages you to play, to play. <laughs> uh, that's me but um uh yeah ali i think that's a fantastic question um the way i usually respond is by going through right um showing them where where um that line of thinking is is false right proving it not true um so when someone says like they're they're not artistic all you have to do is find some medium that they produce things in right um and uh show them that them producing original thought in that medium um if that if we are agreeing that the definition of art is the production of of creative original thought um either original to you or original to somebody else um then boom like they have been um like they have been creative and they have produced something that is artistic now the way that you concede somewhat is like being artistic does not mean you're good at the medium right that you're exceptionally praised um for uh, the thing that you can produce, right? So I think that a lot of times we wrap up our um, being artistic in whether or not we are like best or good at that thing, um, either within the friend group that we know or within people that we see online. Um, and I really think we just got to decouple that. We got to decouple whether or not we are exceptionally skilled in the thing, meaning that we have no skill at all. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. What else we got in the chat? Alex says that her mom is one that says it. Oh, that is so sad. Um, Miss Casare, you're artistic. Um, <laughs> my uh, my mom did the same thing with math, um, and with like, I would say traditional academics in general. Like, um, mom, I know you're listening, but uh, <laughs> um, a lot of the times the thing that would make it really sad is when my mom would say stuff like she's not that smart, um, 
And I feel like that's the same problem because it's untrue. Um, like my mom is exceptionally talented and smart. Um, it's just that we are trained either from external people telling us what our own self-worth is in different fields to believe that we are like not good or not good enough. Um, and then we start to have that negative self-talk pattern like fly into us and then it becomes part of our identity, right? That people have said like, um, you're not good at singing or painting or whatever. And so then you like start to wrap up that in, I am not artistic, um, uh, but you are not the things that you produce. Um, uh, and I think that that's really important. That's something that I've been thinking about a lot this week, um, trying to um, decouple uh, the success of Lumastic and the success of my life. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's just like super important. I, I That's actually really funny. I kind of have a story to build off that. So Parsa is the, pers the photographer who came and was staying this week. But we were, we were talking about like in our photography conversation, like um, what stops people. And like, this is just like kind of a side note, but I, I think it's like really important to kind of make a point that when you are, if there are those people who are like, I guess, very much so judging your art, there is, I think a really, it's really important to surround yourself by people with creative confidence as um, David Kelly would say, and people yeah, yeah. that like help kind of like bring that out because like it is, it's, there's so many cases where it's like make or break. Like there was a situation where like I was starting to dabble in beats and I was literally telling Parsa this and Parsa, such a supportive friend. He's very much, he he comes in with the same energy as you, Drew. Like if I was to come up to you and be like, Aww. Drew, like, I don't know if like, um, I don't know if like I'm artistic, like what you would be like the breakdown be like, Josh, like, listen to me right <laughs> now. Like, that, like he comes in with that energy, but there, there are yeah. like cases that like will stop people for like months. And like, I mean, this lessons learned, but like there was times when I was dabbling in beats and it was an old old friend of mine was literally like, oh, like, can you switch this right now? Like, I don't, I don't like very much so like very harsh with like critiques and like asking to turn it off. And like, no, nah, I don't think you should do this mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And like, it really, it, it really, I think it really is kind of pivotal to also like, if, if you're having those thoughts, I think a lot come from social pressures. And I think it yeah. just like comes to show that like, it's really important as well to like, have like very supportive creative communities. Exactly. Um, and, and that's build why, you up and not judge. And that's right? why I loved Blue Mastic so much in the beginning. That's I'm not uh, even gonna judge. I'm not even there was there's all the me I told you this, Drew, like all the mediums I would post on, if I made something, I posted on Lumastic. Like mm -hmm. because because even though I wasn't afraid my thing would be bad, but I felt like it would get the support like support Uplift, effect and right? uplifting. Even if yeah. it was completely like if I submitted the worst thing visually. I had comfort knowing that like the next thing would be better and that these people wouldn't dock me for it. If that makes like yeah. a lot of sense. No, so, no, it does. Yeah. So I just want to. Kind also, of, like, we've hit that. Joshua, Joshua, we have to celebrate right now. I'm going to turn down my mic because I'm going to scream. Oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> turn down my volume. <laughs> we had nine concurrent viewers. <laughs> Where's the champagne? Where's the champagne? No, <laughs> Um, Thank you to everyone who who came to yeah. uh, stream this. But so excited. This. But also our chat has been popping off. So we have yeah, to read yeah. some things here. Um, uh, Faisa drew drew over here revolutionizing his students when he should just be teaching them math. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> agree there, so Faith. Um, okay, Ali said, I'm going to yell at her. I did, I, uh, yes, yell at her uh, dinner that her food is art. Yes, it is a medium of creative artistic expression, Allie. Um, and yes, happy Mother's Day. Um, thank you, Sarah, for saying yes, cooking is art. Um, uh, my mom said heart. Thank you. Love you, mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Chelsea said, Joshua, I have thoughts for you later if you want them. I do. <laughs> Chelsea, always. Um, yay, Allie said you're at nine. Uh, you're, you're sorry for the faux pas. Woo. Nine, ten, ten. We had we had ten. When did we hit ten? That's amazing. Wow, this is so exciting. Thank you so much. Just everyone. This is this is a, a good day for us. This is a good week. We hit our Instagram finally. We hit our hit our yeah. live stream live stream goal. This is this is pretty sick. Um Okay, what what else? What other things are people feeling? Allie, also thank you for being other Allie, sorry, Allie, my sister. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you for being in the chat. Thanks for joining us today. I hope this conversation is interesting to you. As somebody who I would say is um a 
uh, person who sees themselves as like traditionally ar artistic um, and might not be as confident in the, um, uh, I guess, like sciencey academic aspects of this would love to, I don't know, see a little chat post or whatever about what you're thinking about this conversation. And also, I just want to say, um, I will fight with people in the chat like Chelsea, but I, I want everyone to know that I am not the beholder of what is true and not. These are my own opinions. You are, feel free to disagree with me. Um, and also I am, I'm happy to have productive conversation and change my mind at any p given point in time. <laughs> Chelsea said, please go follow us on Twitter. <laughs> 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 yeah, is that, is that the new goal? New goal? Yeah, well, well, we we were trying to hit what was it? We had fifteen or something on Twitter, so we we're trying to hit yeah. thirty. Um, yeah. So if all, all of you all of you went and followed us on Twitter, that'd be great. Um, oh, this is so sweet. Um, okay, Joshua, what else? What other things can we talk about? Also, like something I had written down, but we did not talk about yet. That is just like literally proof of art and engineering. Go watch any documentary about Disney, like. <laughs> Like literally go watch any, anything about how, um, like animation I feel right. Cause I'm a video guy and like, um, I really just feel like that medium like combines art and engineering so tightly. Um, and it just like is the proof that they are like just the same thing. Um, but yeah, you go watch any, any documentary about, um, like Disney animation studios and how they like literally invented all of these like technical techniques to produce visuals that they needed for that they felt they wanted to show in the movies yeah right um yeah and i think that the counter argument here is that like um like uh and something that i had been reading a lot of as i was writing the blog post is the idea that like engineering inspires art right or, or art inspires engineering and engineering inspires art that they're still different but they're complementary right that the fact that like disney animation studios had to build tools to make the movie right but again i think that that's just kind of um, a false dichotomy like um the tool that was built by the animation studio is also art right yeah um it is something that like people people use experience with it exists in the world in a way that is um uh meant to be like uh um interpreted right? Like it is some form of expression. Um, it was built because of this, but it does not mean that this is not art too. Um, but I don't know, Joshua, what do you think about that? I've been diatribing for a while. What do people in the chat think? Yeah. I'm curious. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think it is, I think tools in, in many sense um, are art in the sense that like, they still like if, if from art, from the perspective, like, like eliciting emotions, like it's just like literally like when you build something like a tool, that you take into consider a, a user when someone builds an art piece, there's emotions that come out of it. When you right. make something that's whether a phone, thinking about how a user interacts with it, holds it, feels with it, um, using something to make a software. Like, I think that's very like artistic. Um, yeah, exactly. And yeah, they're very and much it's the so. same process. Like, like it's literally yeah. no different. You're just replacing things. You're literally replacing medium. Like, yeah. and, and like, Brah, that's proof. Um, Faith said, first, Chelsea said, Drew, I enjoy fighting. It's all good. For those of you who are um, yeah. students of the Enneagram, Chelsea is an eight wing seven and I am a seven wing eight. So, <laughs> so, so we are quite combative, if you know what that means. Um, cool. Faith said, what about those YouTube engineers like Simone Yatch and William Osmond? Exactly. They, uh, she said, I think they're great examples of, of art and engineering being combined. Michael Reeves as well. Yes, I think that that is... Um, so interesting faith because not only is like the thing we can say like the thing they produce like them going an artistic journey to like make like like um chelsea mentioned the truckla right when um simone yatch made her tesla into a truck before the tesla truck existed um right like the truckla is like a thing produced that is like her form of artistic expression right she chose the yeah. the body shape and all these things right but also what's interesting is like the video that she produced um, through making the thing is like this inception quality of like like making two pieces of art yeah. in, in one thing. It's really interesting because and and that's also a really interesting point of like this idea of the inspiration pattern that it's not necess it's not it's not just an inspiration pattern although they do inspire each other because like literally for um, 
like centuries people have been writing about how art inspires art right um and so like that is this it's not necessarily that engineering inspires art and art inspires engineering it's just art inspiring art just like how we think about it in terms of musicians kind of like sampling each other right all these things it's all the same um jen fields uh hi jen oh my god we're at 11. oh my god oh my god this is so exciting we're blowing up guys we're blowing up to the moon here <laughs> drew i got a quick question on my whereby it keeps on saying there's less than one minute left oh my gosh have they put a time limit on this thing it doesn't show that for me really hang on hang on hang on how do i open my toolbars no everything is here Am I just all right? Like well, Joshua, if you if you disappear, also I'm sorry about the construction noise outside. Everyone, <laughs> I can't hear it that I much. Know. I did not know this would be happening. But if Joshua disappears, everyone, um, oh yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Oh my God, this is so funny. Well, everyone, Joshua's gone forever. Um, <laughs> hang on, let me switch to uh, just me. <laughs> well, Joshua, if you're watching the stream, sad boy hours, <laughs> pour one out for Joshua. Everyone, I feel like, like I'm just gonna take some some uh, things from the chat then if we're, if we're not gonna have Joshua here. Um, uh, Yes, Jen, I'm sure has thoughts on this. I just wanted you guys to hit your goal. I stuck on here, but I gotta go take a call. Well, Jen, thanks so much. Um, Abby Frazier, oh my God. Hi, Abby. Um, Abby, if you don't know, Sarah's running the chat. That's why she was so excited to see you. Um, that's a future reel, definitely. Um, yeah, Jen, thanks for popping in. All right, Faith says, I also feel like the ridiculousness of their engineering builds, as in the fact that they're, so she's talking about Simone Yatch and these other engineering YouTubers. So the ridiculousness of their engineering builds, as in the fact that they're not super practical, like fighting Roombas, makes it um, feel even more like art to me. Yeah, isn't it interesting? It's like the wackiness, the... Um, Right, it's the fact that it's um, built for this like emotional response, whether to be funny or whatever. That's then the thing that we think of and interpret more as art than just if uh, she had built a truck. Um, it's really interesting. Um, <laughs> Josh is helping us hit reach our goal because <laughs> Josh is now now in the stream. That is so funny. Um, uh, Abby, if you're still uh, here in the chat, let us know what you're thinking about the intersection of art and engineering, whether you think of yourself as a particularly artistic person or um, your, your experiences with the um, kind of like dichotomy that we have found ourselves in in, in society. Um, <laughs> Chelsea said, uh, yes, her coffee table is made of matches. Yes, exactly. Isn't it so interesting? Like the, the wackiness quality is so important. Um, Cool. For uh, the person that just joined, we're talking about the intersection of art and engineering. You can leave your thoughts in the chat. There's like a long diatribe that um, <laughs> that we've gone on and my co-host is in the void and we're going to have to figure out a new video chat software to use next week. <laughs> um, okay, I'll sit here for like um, probably like five more minutes and uh, answer anybody's questions or hear anybody's thoughts. So get yourselves in the chat now if you if you want. Um Abby said, not much to add. I love hearing all the cool stuff you're talking about. Not artistic at all, but I appreciate it. Ah, oh, Abby, you got to read up in the chat. because. <laughs> also, uh, Ali Cazare, uh, go uh, attack Abby and show her that she's artistic. <laughs> um, wow, this is so fun. Um, Can talk about education and um, how it might contribute to the dichotomy of engineering and art? Yeah, sure. Sarah said, um, do you do I have thoughts on um, how the way that we educate people uh, has um, uh, promoted this like dichotomy between engineering and art and seeing them as different pursuits? Um, yeah, I like have a lot of thoughts. It's what I wrote 30 pages on in my, in my thesis. Um, but I'll try to like sh just pick one aspect of this. Like, um, let's just look at like how we uh, structure classes, right? The fact that like um, when you're going throughout school, uh, you have like seven classes during the day in America. Um, uh, two of them are like electives and the other five are like the traditional subjects of, um, 
uh, history, science, math, um, English, and what's the last one? History, math, science. P -E. P yeah, <laughs> okay, PE health. <laughs> um, right, like, uh, even if we just, like, flip through those, what we've done is, like, segment off the fact that, like, science is science, history is history, um, music is music, all these things. We're not showing that, like, literally all of these things are the same thing, right? It's that we're switching out medium. Right, like when you write a, a paper for a history class, you have produced something that is artistic. You have pr like produced the written word. You have chosen a medium of writing. Well, you didn't choose; somebody assigned it to you. But um, <laughs> you you have um, uh, like put some put thoughts out there uh, in the world through a medium um, that are like original to you, um, and that means that that thing produced is art. Um, again, we can have separate conversation whether we believe it is good or bad art, because <laughs> um, that is the subjective thing. But the objective thing is that the thing produced is art. Um, but we wouldn't call that art class. And a lot of times, like kids, I mean, like literally all the time, I would say probably, um, kids in history class are not thinking that the, the history paper they wrote was artistic, right? But it was. Um, but because we're segmenting off um, the mediums, um, and show, seeing or not thinking about them as mediums, but thinking of them as subjects, right? Um, we're again pervasing this thing that like some people are artistic and some people are not. Some people are good at history and some people are not. Some people are math people. Some people are not. And it's just wrong. Um, okay, I saw the chat popping off, so I wanted to get in here. Um, yes, Chelsea. Everything is yes, Chelsea. Everything is art. So everyone is artistic at Ivy Frazier. Um, Chelsea, oh, said specifically how we educate girls. Um, I am not an expert on that, su <laughs> that subject, obviously, but um, I do agree that um, uh, women in particular, because of a lot of other factors, too, about how we, like, treat women in society, um, are... Uh, here, I'll diatribe a little. Um, girls more than men are taught that, like, perfection is the only thing that is, like, um, acceptable to them because, like, there's way more pressure and all these things to, to, um, to them than boys. Um, and so uh, even when we think about, like, art, the strictly what we would define as, like, artistic pursuits, music, um, uh, dance, theater, right? Like, there's way more pressure in those um, to what, like, uh, being artistic or having like real skill and talent in those things is than um, uh, for boys and the same tracks for the other core subjects. Um, yeah, it's like a big yike, but <laughs> I'm going to go back to the chat because again, I'm not an expert. Um, we could have Sarah on next week to, to talk about that. Um, uh, Abby said I should read up in the chat. Um, Ali Cazare, you ever make a sandwich, Abby? <laughs> Allie Cazare, I love you so much. She said, you ever make a sandwich, Abby, or write your name? <laughs> love it. Um, awesome. 12 people. This is so fantastically exciting. Chelsea said, there's a real discussion about uh, inequality in education to be had about this. Maybe some future blog posts. Yes, I think that is a great idea, Chelsea. We can talk about that in our marketing meeting. Um, uh, oh, Sarah, uh, chat moderator for Lou Bastic said, I, I seem to recall Abby having some pretty pop and interior decorating skills back in the day. Purple walls. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, uh, we have a ready to go drop in knowledge. Oh, Lord, this is so funny. Um, all right. So Chelsea said there's psych research that suggests girls math confidence drops at age eight. Uh, yeah, it's like a big it's a big, big yike, Chelsea. There's like, um. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I won't remember the exact numbers I put in my thesis, but um, the uh, they basically like ask kids over the course of time to like rate themselves um, in like being creative. Um, and everyone across the board, like girls and boys, drops like significantly after fifth grade. Um, it's like, uh, like scary. Um, but uh girls drop at a faster rate and drop lower like in terms of how they then would rate themselves um than boys uh, so big big yike um <laughs> matthew matthew uh animal crossing equals ultimate expression of art yes actually matthew this is a really interesting thing so um in game design they talk about concepts of 
um, aesthetics, like reasons people play games. Um, and uh, one of them, I think, is actually literally called expression. And Animal Crossing is like one of those games, right, where you're building your own town, your own home, all these things. It's like a um, an extension of you. So that's actually a super good point. Um, Faith said, like, I love playing the banjo, but it stresses me out to improvise because I don't want to look stupid. Yeah, Faith. Now, now we're we're thinking, right? Is like, um, what uh, uh, socio cultural factors have led um, you to feel that way, right? It's very interesting. Um, cool. Sarah said this TED talk is relevant to girls in STEM. Love that, Sarah. Um, Abby said I had to hop off, but it was amazing hearing you guys chat, even if you're roasting me for not reading the chat. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Abby. Um, cool. Faith said. Uh, also, or I stopped painting for like three years because my art didn't look realistic when really I should have been working on developing my own personal style. Yes, isn't it interesting? You're, uh, it's like the going for perfection rather than like um, just like enjoying the medium. Um, cool. Uh, Chelsea said, Matthew, yes, Animal Crossing. Um, uh, we loved having you, Abby. Yes. Um, <laughs> Allie said, no, Abby, not roasting. Just joking. No, I think she, I think she got it. Allie, you don't have to feel bad. Um all right, friends, uh, I'm going to dip out here. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for helping us reach our goal um, and even surpassing our goal. This is so exciting. Thanks to everybody who like put their, their thoughts in the chat. This was like the most engaged conversation that we've had. Um, and I really love it. We're going to now have a marketing meeting where we talk about how to do this more. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. So thanks for being here. Uh, we'll catch you next week. We're here uh, every Friday at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. I've forgot to say that uh, in the past couple live streams. So um, yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.